I'll uh, turn into an enemy here, and they'll follow me, find me on the path, and start beating on me momentarily. There they go. They found me. Like, oh, there's an intruder. We have to kill it, and they do it. Hey, how's it going, everybody? It's your pal Impossible I'm here. Today we're playing some industry, and I'm gonna be showing you guys how to set up a simple unit control system just using a single processor. And uh, today we're gonna be working with the flares. So essentially, we want units to go, let's say, from point A, which would be on the left side over here, to point B, and then back, and then forth, and back and forth until. Uh, the world ends, I guess, and they, until they find enemies to kill, and then they go back on their path. You know, people are always asking me, how do I do this? How do I do that? And you know what? I figured I'll just do it live. You guys can watch me do it, and we'll figure it out together. I haven't actually made this yet. I haven't made a prototype, so let's just hop in here. Uh, so what are we going to want to do? First off, uh, we're probably going to want to bind to a unit, so let's start with that. Let's go ahead and do a unit bind. We're going to be uh, binding to a flare, which is that one right there. There we go. All right, so now we have the flare. Let's start off, let's see what flag the flare is. So we're gonna have to use a sensor here. Sensor, we're gonna say flag equals, I have to look for the uh, flag uh, stat here somewhere. Attribute is the word I was looking for. Flag, there we go. And this is gonna be an at unit. There we go. And if we wanna see what this is, one of the things I, uh, I don't see enough people doing when you're making a script, right off the bat, you should always have a message right here. And this message is very important, by the way. You guys should totally subscribe. But uh, if, if you're debugging, you're trying to figure out what's going on, you want to know what value is what, or is what things are, what you actually think they are, just print them out. Uh, you'll know right away if something's wrong, if something's not what you think it is. So I, whenever I'm debugging or making a script, I always have a message box there, just so I can write values into it. Anyway, continuing on here. So let's look at the flag. All right. So let's say if flag, let's go ahead and set up a uh, operator here. So if flag uh, equals zero, we're going to have it do one thing. We're going to set up another flag just like this. If flag equals one, it'll be going to the other rendezvous. So we'll use this one. Right now, I don't want that jump set currently. So let's work under the... Uh, the uh, assumption that flag is zero. Where do we want it to go? What do we want it to do? For right now, I'm going to move that out the way, but that's not where that's really going to go. I'm just going to doing it to make it easier for myself while I'm editing here. All right, so flag equals zero. That means this unit has not been flagged by anything yet. I like using the zero flags. That means it's not specifically being used for something else. And this system is going to be using that zero flag, uh, reassigning to one, and then reassigning back to zero. So essentially... You're going to be taking things out of the main pool of unused workers and then putting them back in in case you might need them for something else. And this will just happen auto magically. All right, where was, where was I going here? Okay, let's let's set up a waypoint for ourselves. Let's say if flag equals zero, the waypoint that we want to get to is... Let me see here. I'm going to set, set values here. Let's say target... Let's say targ X in this one is going to be zero. We're going to be going all the way to the left. And uh, targ Y, which is probably going to be static, but it doesn't matter. Uh, targ Y is going to be roughly 280. This is a 500 by 500 map, so I'm just going to have them set somewhere around the middle. Let's put this to like 275, so a little bit above middle, uh, pretending we're holding a front of some sort. All right, so we have that. We have targ S, targ Y. Now we want to see how far are we from this spot. All right, because this is where we want to get to. If we're right on top of it, well, we don't want to be there anymore. We want to go back the other way. So let's see what's going on there. So let's see, what is our unit position? So let's get a sensor reading here. This is going to be unit X equals, should be like X chord or X and at unit. There we go. And this is going to be the same exact thing, but for Y. So here we go, at Y, there we go. And now we wanna see how far are we from this destination? Because if we get close enough, we'll just say that you know we're close enough, we should switch over to the other patrol unit. Uh, what value you set for that is arbitrary. It's really up to you. All right, so let's go ahead and do this. See, targ X, uh, let's, let's go ahead and set a operation here. We'll say, what's the different distance between the X coordinates? So we'll call this x diff, and this is going to be targ x minus, 
uh, unit X. There we go. And we're going to do another one just like this, but for Y. So this will be Y diff. And this will be targ Y minus unit Y. Let's make sure I actually kept my naming convention there. I did. And uh, basically, we're going to add up the absolute values of these to get the total distance of how far it is. Because even, even if these are negative, you can't have negative distance. You know, so once it goes into the negative, you, you, you know, it just goes to an absolute value again. So let's go ahead and get this going here. Let's get the operation. We're going to say result. Say abs x or x distance. Let's go with x disk equals. I have to go to the absolute value here. Where is the abs? Where is the abs? I know there's one here somewhere. Abs. There we go. X disk equals abs x diff. I could actually just rename this the same. It's really the same for me, but it doesn't change anything. Just to use a different variable name. Uh, y disk will be the same thing, but for Y. There we go. And now we just want to add them together. Total distance, essentially. So total dist equals X disk plus Y dist. Let's get the Y dist over here. There we go. So this will tell us, tell us how far we are away from the magical spot that we're supposed to be. Um, and if we're close enough, let's just say, what is our, let's just say if, whoops, I didn't mean to duplicate that. If total dist is less than, less than or equal to five, uh, actually, you know what? Yeah, whatever. If that's the case, we can just flag it. So go to unit control. Change the flag as soon as I can find it. Flag. There we go. Unit flag equals one. So basically, if if we're, you know, a distance of five or less, we'll change the flag over so we switch over to our new new route. And uh, that that's pretty simple, honestly. Uh, the other thing we could do... I'm, I'm like thinking in my head how I can make this better before we're even done doing this. You know what? I'll leave it for now. We'll, we'll mess with it later at some other point. It's not a big deal. So anyway, we're going to say if distance is less than or equal five, we're going to flip our flag. Otherwise, we have to actually move to the, uh, move to the uh, place we tend to tell on our uh, unit to go so far. So let's go ahead and do a move script here and say move to, let's see, where is our X? Uh, two, 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 targ X equals zero. We'll just hit targ X and uh, targ Y. That'll work. And targ Y. And what we have right now should actually make our, uh, make our units, uh, whatchamacallit, run around and go to this one position. And then they'll get there, and then they'll flag, and then nothing will happen because they won't get to another place and unflag. Well, let's see this for now. Let me go ahead and throw an end in here real quick. So basically, it, will, it won't reflag it until it gets within range here. So let's see if this is working as we expect. I have a bunch of flares. They're over here. There we go. We have like 15 of them or something. And they're all flagged. There's a, okay, we're going to go to that patrol point. We know where it is. It should be, I think it's like on this Y uh, coordinate and then all the way to zero here. So this is the behavior that we are expecting, and this is what they are doing. I like testing, you know, once I get a certain amount of code done, I say, okay, I got all this stuff done. Let me make sure this works before I move on. So, okay. So our units, have our, they're all they're all uh, flagged as flag one now. They went to the uh, zero on the X coordinate and 275 on the Y. So, and they're just sitting there saying, okay, this is where you told me to go. I don't know what to do now, so I'm just going to sit here. <laughs> Essentially is what they're saying. So let's go back in here. And uh, let's do the same thing, but for uh, but for why? I mean, uh, for you know, to go to the other coordinate. So let's set up a new coordinate. This will all be if flag equals uh, zero. This is supposed to be zero here. I don't know why that got why that got changed. If flag equals one, we're gonna go. Actually, we don't even need to do flag equal. Yeah, whatever, whatever. Uh, let's say a flag does not equal any of these. We just we just end it. That seems like a smart plan. That way we don't grab things we're not supposed to be grabbing. So let's go ahead and do that. So flag equals zero. You go right here. 
And uh, you know what? What we could do in this, we could do all sorts of different things in this case. But I don't feel like we could reuse a lot of this code. So whereas I can say, okay, if, if flag equals one, target x equals you know, you know, five hundred instead. But uh, you know what? Maybe we'll do that. Let's do that for right now. Let's just set targx x is zero right off the bat. Uh, this could be anywhere. It doesn't matter where I have that. And let's say if flag equals uh, one. We'll go here, targ x. Let me du duplicate this one. This will be targ. Yeah, I'm gonna keep moving everything. Targ x. This will equal 500. There we go. And so if flag equals zero, you start here and you just get the flag uh, for targ y. Otherwise, you get the targ x one here and you set it to 500, resetting the zero you set up here. That's pretty simple so far. Uh, we can keep things exactly the same, except for here uh let me see here we don't want to flag automatically so we're going to say here if targ is less than equal to this we have to we have to decide okay if you're flag one you know if you're already flag one you don't want to be flag one again that doesn't make sense so let's change that let's go ahead and set a jump here say if uh let's see where do i have the flag value set i probably have it up here I'm just making, yeah, okay, I have it set to actually flag. Sometimes you have different naming conventions. I want to make sure I had the same thing. Uh, if flag equals zero, you want to set flag to one. Otherwise, you want to set flag to zero. There we go. And we'll throw in an end right here. There we go. So, uh, you know, if flag is already zero, you're setting it to one. Otherwise, you're going through and you're hitting this condition and fla setting flag to zero. And then you're ending and starting over again. So this already should have our guys moving back and forth. Let's watch them a little bit, see how they're doing. They're all flagged. They're flagged one still. I may have made mistakes. We're going to have to check. They're moving over here to the right where they're supposed to be going. What do you do when you get here? All right, mistakes have been made. They're uh, they're not unflagging. They're flagged one, and they're still over here, and they're just staying here. So let's you know let's go over to our uh, display over here and start printing things out to see what's going wrong. All right, you know I'm going to take a good look at it because there's a good chance I did something stupid, and uh, that's what happens when you code live. You know, you get a chance to figure things out properly. So if flag equals one, we're setting targx. Otherwise, we're setting leaving targax as it was. That works good. We're getting the moving back to the other place seemed to work fine. So that was good. Uh, let me see. Flag one, zero. Running down here. All right, you know, give me a second. I'll run this down I'll let, and I'll let you guys know what I figured out here. All right, I think I figured it out. I, I forgot to set the flag here. So if the total distance is less than five, you have to jump down here so we know to change flags. I just didn't have the jump set. That's all that was. Let's see if they're actually moving now. I haven't actually tested. There could be more more mistakes. Oh, here we go. There we go. They were all cuddled up over here. And now they're moving back the other way. Their flag went back to zero. Now let's see if they actually work going back to the right after this now. Make sure they actually work the way I think that they're working. We'll have to see. All right. They should get here. Then they should turn back around once they get to like here-ish, I guess. You, you going to turn around? Did I break something? Something is broke. No, no. They're working. They stood there for a little while. I guess the uh, processor is kind of slow. Uh, they do have to, you know, they do have to wait a little bit. But yeah, they're going back and forth. And uh, they started from over there. So we know the cycle is working right now. But right now, they will literally just sit there and get shot at if anything is in the area. So let's add in a little bit of just basic combat code so they can protect themselves. I think that'd be a smart idea. So let's go ahead in here. We have working code. We know it works. We don't have to mess with anything. Let's start with this. Let's say we have the unit here. Let's go ahead and add a unit radar. We're going to bring this all the way to the top. There we go. We're going to target the flare. Say target enemy and any order one output equals target. There we go. And we're going to say if target equals null, we'll continue down here. We'll do all this. We won't have to worry about anything. All right, so that's how things are going to be. So let's go ahead and get the jump here. Uh, I probably should have made this first. Otherwise, I'm going to have to keep grabbing this and throwing it up here. It's going to be annoying. 
All right, so let's start it like this. If target, which is the output of this, basically we're searching for enemies and we're sorting by distance and say, okay, who's the closest target? If the target equals null, then we know that there's no target and we're fine. So equals null. Uh, then we can just go down here. Everything's fine. Nothing to worry about. Uh, otherwise, we have to we have to do things. Let's work on uh, unit control. We're going to move this all the way up here again. There we go. So if target equals null, we're skipping this. But otherwise, we're approaching. Uh, well, we have to find out what the target stats are. So we have to do a sensor. I'm going to copy this sensor here and uh, reuse it. So we're going to call this targ x again. We're rewriting the targ x and targ y. We don't, we shouldn't really, honestly, but I'm going to anyway because I'm a bad person. And uh, <laughs> it doesn't matter because we're not going to use it later on anyway. We're going to skip out of this as soon as we find it. And this will not be an at unit. This will be in target. And let's copy this again. This will be targ y now. And target. And we're going to say approach targ x. I have to put the underscore there. Sorry about that. Uh, targ y. Uh, radius. What's the max? Let's see that the max range on a flare is. Flare, what is your max range? 14. Okay. It's not very much, I'll be honest, but, you know, we'll work with it. Uh, radius 14. And uh, we're going to go ahead and shoot P them as well. So let's go ahead and get a... Uh, actually, you know what? I can use... I can use unit control here as well. There we go. We'll set this one up to shoot P if I can find it. Where are you? Target oh target P? Yeah, target P is what I was looking for. Uh target P, target X. Uh just target actually. There we go. And shoot is one. For yes, shoot. You can set this to true. It doesn't matter what you what you want here. There we go. And that'll be an end on this one. So let's go ahead and throw an end in here. Where'd my end go? I guess we, I wouldn't normally have an end at the end, so that makes sense. Uh, let me see. Target P, unit, shoot tree, true, and that'll be it. So if we see something, we won't just continue on our flight and just get our butt kicked. We'll just actually fight back against it. And once whatever that is is dead, we'll go back on our flight and hopefully everything should be fine. Hopefully. We'll see how this goes. Target X, approach. Yep, I mean, this looks like it'll work to me. Let's, uh... Let me make sure we haven't broken everything. Things seem to be still functioning going back and forth. Uh, let's spawn in some units and see what they do about it. If they do anything at all about it. I don't know. Let's uh, actually, you know what? We can make this easy. I'll turn into a bad guy really quick. I changed my team. I am now the Red Crux team. And let's see if they shoot at me. And then I'll, uh, then I'll turn sharded real quick. They are not... Sh oh, you know what? Oh, there they go. They shot me. I'm going sharded again. They stopped shooting me. It took them a while to figure out that I was a bad guy. I'm not entirely sure why, but they definitely did. Let's go ahead and heal myself again real quick. I'll go red again so that they'll shoot at me again. It doesn't matter if I which one I choose here. So now we're, now we're red. Let's see if they shoot at me again or not. They keep going. That's a little bit weird. They should, uh, they're definitely shooting at me, but the, yeah, something's not quite right about that. I think, I think the processor is just too slow. Oh, that's exactly what it was because now they're working. They were just, it was basically our guys were just too, I'm going to put on invincibility mode. Yeah. Our guys were just too slow. So they didn't understand how to make it work. But yeah, see, this is working out great. So that's what happens when you get, when you use the microprocessor too much. I could, uh, I have this on invincibility mode, by the way. If I turn that off, uh, well, I, I think I have to seppuku myself to turn that off, actually. There we go. Let's go back to sharded, and I'll go back to red. There we go. They, uh, they definitely find me, and then they, sh they try to follow me for a second. They don't see me. They just keep going. But yeah, that's all it was. The, uh, processor speed was a little bit too slow. Uh, we could, you know, obviously fix that by either A, just using more microprocessors, or B, using a much better processor. Let me go back to sharded for a moment so they don't pick on me too hard. 
Now let's go ahead and do that. Let's go ahead and uh, put down a more hyper processor. We don't have to use the hyper, I don't think. Let me see. What's the difference between a logic and a microprocessor? What's the instructions? 120 per second compared to 480. Yeah, I mean, that, that essentially uh, quads it right off the bat. I guess it takes up the same amount of space, too. Right, let's go ahead and do that. We'll upgrade this one. Let's go ahead and edit. Copy the clipboard. Let's get out of here. I did not mean to do that. That was a derp move. There we go. Basically, let's go ahead and edit here. Import from clipboard. There we go. And that means we can get rid of all these. And we can still be hooked up to that one if we want. Why not? All right, so this should still be functioning. Now it is all in a single processor. They're going back and forth on their own. I'm not having to do anything silly with them. I'll uh, turn into an enemy here, and they'll follow me, find me on the path and start beating on me momentarily. There they go. They found me like, oh, there's an intruder. We have to kill it. And they do it. And uh, there's all sorts of other things you could do if you wanted to. If they found an enemy, you could put it into like a memory bank, which all other units uh, would reference. So if one person found anything, they'd all swarm the area. That would be very easy to pull off. Uh, there's all sorts of things you can do with this. I just wanted to get very basic functionality into this. So uh, basically anyone could just plop this down and it would just work. Uh, right now it would just work at the specific coordinates that you put in there. Um, you know, default to 0 and 500 on the uh, 275 Y coordinate access. But uh, you can get in there and manipulate that to do anything you want. Anyway, if you guys are new to this channel, is what I do. Uh, you know, I do ministry guides and I also do ministry let's plays. And I, I do let's plays mostly, but I've just been doing guides lately to help you guys out. Uh, so if you guys are into that kind of stuff, why don't you go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Click that bell icon so you know when I put out new content. Smash that like button. Leave a comment down below. Thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.